So a new poll about the upcoming referendums in Ireland has shown that the seemingly impenetrable lead that the yes yes side had might not be as solid as the regime once had hoped and the no no side has just been given a big boost. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. A Sunday Independent poll a month ago put the numbers for yes in both referendums at 47 and 49% respectively, and a no at 29 and 25% respectively, with 24% saying they didn't know or were unsure. However, a recent follow-up Sunday Independent poll showed that an interesting change had happened. The yes yes side and the no no side both have lost grounds and their support has dropped. But most significantly, the number of people who said they were unsure rose by 24% to 36%. That's a 50% increase in the people who feel less certain the closer we get to the 8th of March. And that means that despite what seemed like an insurmountable lead just a few months ago, these referendums are far from decided and everything is still to play for. That means that these referendums could very well be decided by people having conversations with friends, families and even strangers. The closer we get to Friday, the more coverage it's going to get, the more debates are going to be had, and the more on everyone's minds and lips it's going to be. So with such a huge swath of the electorate still seemingly undecided, the more important these upcoming conversations have become for both sides in gaining that crucial undecided support. So with that in mind, I've decided to quickly run through the five do's and don'ts when trying to convince undecided people to vote no. Let's get started. I know it sounds simple, but this might be the most important point I make in this video. As someone who's not new to dissident political thought, I'm very well aware that sometimes when it comes to talking to normal disinterested people, it can be hard to sit patiently and listen to their points because you've probably heard pretty much everything they've had to say before. There's two exceptions and it gets oh, kind of Oh, you can Ron stay, Dyson but I'm leaving. yellow if they're using late season apples. And of course in Canada, the whole thing's flip flop. Oh my. They get most of their positions from mainstream sources, so you've been inundated with those same points already and you have counterpoints ready to go in your head. But you have to resist that urge to push back too strongly and it's essential to let them articulate their own points and then subtly ask them questions that will lead them to independently notice the gaps in their own knowledge. For example, ask them what the impacts of adding durable relationships will be. They can't answer that because, well, no one can. This will cause them to independently recognize the gap in their knowledge and then you have an opportunity to fill that gap with your opinion as opposed to just telling them they're wrong and bombarding them with information. Which brings me neatly to my first don't. The urge to just vomit all your information that you know and have thought about and read about for months will be strong when talking to someone who's undecided. You've got to avoid this temptation at all costs. Firstly, people really don't respond well to being lectured at. In fact, if you take a confrontational approach and go with the intention of proving someone wrong, it will have literally the opposite effect. Study after study shows that when people are actively confronted with evidence that contradicts their worldview, they will become more steadfast in their beliefs. This is why asking questions and letting people come to their own conclusions is essential and ranting and information dumping on people who aren't as politically engaged as you is to be avoided at all costs. While there are many flaws with both of these referendums, there's only really one that is 100% inarguable, and that is the failure to define accurately durable relationships. This means that they are asking us to vote for fundamental changes to our society when we don't even know what those changes are. Bring up how disrespectful that is, Bring up the potential for abuses by this already unpopular government. Bring up things like truples and polygamy. These things are not supported by the majority of people, but they could become legally recognized and will make normal people turn on the yes side. The failure to accurately define durable relationships is the silver bullet in your debates. Use it. Now this might just be a pet peeve of mine, but I see regular references to the World Economic Forum in every Irish politics debate no matter what the topic by a good number of people. Now I'm not here to debate its relevance or its impact on society or any of that stuff. I'm just here to remind you what kind of people you're trying to convince. They are normal undecided people. If you are undecided with a few days to go in a referendum, it's most likely you aren't that politically engaged. 
So if you then start talking about weird meetings of global elites in strange little Swiss towns where they openly talk about plans to control every element of your life and end private property and you'll be happy about it and usher in a fourth industrial revolution and they're led by some weird freaky German James Bond villain, the average normie's gonna think you're a lunatic and they're gonna run a mile from you. So stick to the point and don't reveal your true power level to them. Remember, normies are programmed to react strongly against these kinds of messages. So for these discussions sake, just let it be. The media and the government have been relentless in their attempts to frame this as the women in the home referendum. They want to make it seem like the constitution states that a woman's only place in Irish society is in the home and that anything outside of that is not protected. Be clear in showing them that this isn't actually what the constitution says at all. Show them how female Supreme Court Justice and head of Ireland's Electoral Commission Maria Baker herself admits that this isn't in the Constitution and that this article doesn't limit women in their rights at all and it never actually has. Explain that things like the marriage bar weren't unique to Ireland and they actually existed long before this Constitution was ever written. So the idea that this article limits or has ever limited women's rights in Ireland is just untrue. When talking to undecided voters, this might be the most important thing not to do. Whether you agree or not with gay marriage and abortion doesn't matter. But what does matter is that they were, and still are, extremely popular among your average politically disengaged person. If you mention these referendums as evidence of a moral decline or a changing identity of the country, then you're going to lose the average undecided voter because they are almost certainly ones that supported these two referendums. And it might have been the only time in their lives that they were invested in any sort of political cause. The government has been desperately trying to recapture the progressive energy by linking these referendums to these older referendums. Don't do the work for them. Immigration may be labeled as a contentious issue in the press, but in reality, it's one the vast majority of people actually agree on. And it's one of the biggest issues in the country. Bring up that durable relationships can potentially be used for massive increases in family reunifications, just as Fina Gael TD, Neil Richmond himself, openly talked about. And this could lead to a huge increase in legal immigration and further strain our already strained services. Toe the line when talking about immigration and remember who you're talking to. Only very recently has immigration become an acceptable thing to talk about. But if you read the terms replacement migration or great replacement in any media outlet, it is inevitably followed by things like far right, anti-Semitic, racist, neo-Nazi conspiracy theory, and all of these labels will shape their reaction to you. Your average disinterested person will not respond well to hearing about global plans put in place by secret international organizations to replace you and destroy your culture and identity. Avoid the extremist topics, focus on the basics. In the vast majority of Irish referendums, undecided voters tend to shift strongly towards the no vote because it's a vote for the status quo and the yes vote is a vote for change. So if that change isn't seen as needed, then people won't go out of their way to push for it. That's why it's essential to focus on the total mystery that is the kind of legislative impact that this referendum will have. We don't know what kind of legislative changes will happen for a yes vote in either referendum. The government themselves don't even know. Focus hard in on this when someone is unsure because they generally won't go out of their way to vote for some mystery change that they can't predict. Make this a core pillar of your arguments. How can I vote for change when I don't know what that change will be? It's important to stay positive. The yes side may still be the favorite, but momentum is a very real thing in elections and referendums. And all the shifts in momentum the closer we get to polling day are towards the no camp. So keep that in mind. Talk about how they themselves can make a difference. How this is a chance to push back against the big parties that are already very unpopular. And most importantly, remember what the win conditions are. Like in a game of football, you can have 90% possessions, 50 shots and a total territorial domination and still lose 1-0 to a team who had one shot. And that's the opportunity that's arising in these next few days. So when talking to people, be they your friends, your mother, your father, your auntie, your uncle, brother, sister, cousin, whoever, remember, your goal isn't to convince them of everything you believe. It's just to help them see that on this one issue, you might be right. And that really doesn't sound too hard to me. <laughs>